So um, again, thank you for uh, thank you for joining. Um, let me uh, let me start with uh, a promise, or rather, um, a fantasy. Imagine um, a new economy uh, that runs on blockchain, where businesses can form networks and validate each other's transactions, where they can uh, describe their business deal or a contract in computer code um, in smart contract. The smart contract then uh, settles in fiat currency. And this fiat currency, businesses don't have to hold in bank accounts. They can hold them in their digital wallets. And this fiat currency has properties of cryptocurrency. They have uh, individual uh, numbers so that you can trace them. You can assign attributes and you can run them in uh, and settle them in smart contracts. Now, this has been a promise of uh, enterprise blockchain um, for, for many years. And it has been a motto of uh, this great organization, Hyperledger, to create blockchain platform for business. And we've built amazing technology that supports that. We have enterprise platforms that uh, allow businesses to do just that, form networks, deploy smart contracts, issue tokens, and so on. Now, um, what have been missing is the legal framework for that a legal framework that will make every smart contract legally binding, a legal framework that will um, make, um, if, for example, if a business issues a token um, with a promise that will make this promise uh, legally binding. So we have technology um, and we have a legal framework for that. Um, well, in Russia, we do. We live in exciting times and uh, there have been uh, two major developments recently um, that uh, uh, give us a hope that we can build this uh, new economy. Um, last year, a much debated um, um, federal law on digital financial assets um, came into uh, force. This law um, allows us to do just that. It allows businesses to issue tokens, to raise money, um, issue tokens that represent their um, goods or uh, materials so that they can trade tokens instead of um, uh, physical, physical goods. And most importantly, it gives a legal framework for uh, blockchain platforms um, where um, uh, businesses and users can uh, deploy smart contracts, issue tokens, um, and run a new economy. Another um, major development, uh, and you've seen this around the world, are uh, central bank digital currencies, CBDC. And um, our central bank, Bank of Russia, is developing a digital ruble um, which is uh, a claim on central bank. It's a fiat currency that uh, has properties of uh, cryptocurrency. You can trace it, and most importantly, you can use it in smart contracts on, um, on other platforms. So what we have now um, is technology, rather mature platforms, and we have uh, a legal framework. Are we ready for that? And we at Sberbank are ready. We have built a blockchain platform um, that uh, is almost ready for um, it's ready for production. We're in the final stages of uh, getting a license from Bank of Russia, and this platform allows businesses to do what I just described. It allows businesses to issue tokens. Those tokens are called uh, digital financial assets, and it allows uh, developers and businesses to deploy smart contracts and settle smart contracts in fiat currency. How did we uh, how did we do that? Um, we use Hyperledger Fabric as a technology core. We have uh, enhanced it. I'll, I'll talk a bit um, um, a bit later about that. Uh, we made it available via our cloud offering. We've created basic functionality that uh, lets users issue tokens and deploy smart contracts, and we build products on top of that. Our main product is the platform for digital financial assets um, that is open to um, our clients. And we expect our clients to be um, businesses, corporations, financial institutions, and most importantly, um, uh, developers, fintech developers, or so software vendors. That we um, we see a large interest from them, in, uh, from them, and um, we hope that they will create uh, smart contracts and applications that use um, that use smart contracts and settle in in fiat currency. Now, um, a few words about what um, uh, who we are. Um, Sparebank is the largest bank in Russia and in Eastern Europe. It's one of the top um, European banks by capitalization, um, and it has a huge uh, customer base. We have almost 100 million um, retail clients, almost 3 million active corporate clients. 
And most importantly, Sberbank is the center of uh, Sber ecosystem. Sber um, ecosystem uh, com uh, is comprised of almost 50, um, 50 businesses in all different industries from food delivery to taxi to uh, video streaming. Um, and most importantly, it's technology offering. I already mentioned uh, uh, Sber Cloud. Sber Cloud is our cloud offering. Um, and part of that uh, uh, technology stack are Sparebank Laboratories, Laboratory for Artificial Intelligence, Robotics, and Sparebank Blockchain Laboratory that, uh, that I have. So in our laboratory, we developed uh, this platform, tokenization platform, and our main product is uh, a platform uh, for issuance of digital financial assets. Now, what this platform is, it is open to our clients, um, our uh, corporate clients, via a familiar um, uh, user interface, the interface that they use every day to manage their accounts, to move money. Um, but now it has a window into our blockchain platform and they can issue uh, and create tokens simply by filling out a form um, in, um, in their Sberbank business online application. So they can issue tokens that represent their goods, for example, uh, grain or uh, metals um, that, they pr um, that they produce, or it could be um, a monetary claim. It could be a commercial paper. So uh, we see in this new functionality, uh, the new economy where um, a business no longer needs to go to an investment banker to organize the, an IPO or to um, issue commercial paper or a bond. Uh, or a bond. They can do this all in forms of uh, uh, tokens that they issue on the platform. Once the token um, goes through all the um, uh, email and KYC requirements, it becomes available to investors. Investors can, they can buy the token, uh, trade it. And um, what's important is that uh, we know, uh, we as operator, of course, we provide governance um, of the platform, but we also provide a settlement coin on the platform. So when an investor buys a token, it actually exchanges a stable coin, which is tied to um, a fiat currency, to Russian ruble, and we provide a smart contract that provides for delivery versus payment, one atomic transaction where you exchange a token with a token representing money. Um, what is the stable coin? Um, stable coin, of course, is stable. It is tied to a Russian ruble. It is controlled by smart contracts. You can validate these transactions by connecting your own node, your own server to the network where you can spawn your node in Sber Cloud in our blockchain as a service offering. And um, what's important is that uh, this coin and the movement of this coin is integrated uh, uh, with the bank's backend so that the movement of the coin represent movement of uh, fiat currency in our clients' uh, bank accounts. What's important here is that um, unlike Perhaps other stable coins, which are perhaps uh, algorithmic or uh, stable coins that are backed by metals or other reserves, this stable coin represents actual money in our um, users' accounts. So, in order to transact on the platform, a user, um, we will lock uh, this amount of money in our users' uh, bank account and will create spare coin or stable coin um, on the platform. And then our users can use it to trade, um, uh, to buy other tokens, uh, to trade, or to send it to a smart contract. So this stable coin is the uh, um, is a native currency of uh, the blockchain platform, just like uh, Ether is a native currency in Ethereum. And just like in Ethereum, you can send a spare coin to a smart contract. Um, a very simple smart contract that uh, we present to our, our users, to our clients, to, uh, to businesses, uh, could be as simple as um, a three-party co uh, contract where there's a seller, a buyer, and a third party. Almost, um, almost uh, an escrow or a letter of credit contract. Of course, um, contracts can be written in computer code, in uh, um, chain code in Hyperledger Fabric and can be of uh, any complexity. You can uh, describe um, a financial instrument, uh, uh, a bond or an uh, or a swap or exotic derivative in the computer code. And what's important is that it can settle in uh, stablecoin, in fiat currency. And um, 
the uh, the new legal framework um, gives legal binding to this uh, new instrument described uh, described in code. Now, not every business um, wants to describe the contract in uh, in code or have uh, an ability to do that. So, for that, we created a smart contract modeler or a smart contract constructor, as we call it, um, which is a graphical user interface. Um, that uh, can cover actually a vast majority of uh, supply chain or trade finance um, contracts. Um, two or more parties can come to an agreement and sign their agreement with uh, the, uh, the private keys, uh, the digital uh, signatures, and um, they can describe um, conditions um, of delivery, conditions of uh, this trade deal, and um, Many stages, uh, many stages of payment, and uh, each stage uh, of payment can be uh, tied to a certain event or um, a certain action by uh, an inspector or how we call it uh, in blockchain, an oracle. Um, so um, you can, uh, like I said, you can describe a vast majority of uh, supply chain or trade finance uh, contracts by this uh, visual um, GUI. Um, the platform is open to developers um, where they can uh, upload their smart contracts. They zip up their chain code, they um, add their own web application, and they can either um, spawn a node in uh, our blockchain as a service, um, use the GUI interface to upload the chain code uh, um, archive, upload the web application, um, and they can make this application available in the App Store. The App Store is curated by us, and uh, we hope that uh, developers will create new applications and uh, create new financial products um, and make it uh, available in App Store for our clients and for their clients and start selling their apps. Now, um, this blockchain as a service, um, I mean, you, 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 uh, you have this offering in um, other um, cloud solutions in Amazon and uh, until recently uh, Microsoft as well. but. Um, what's important is that uh, we also offer a na native currency for the smart contract. So simply by importing a library in your chain code, you can start using the stable coin to settle your smart contract. And that's what makes this offering uh, unique because this offering is not only from uh, our cloud solution, but it's also from the bank. So what is the platform made of? Um, it is based on uh, Hyperledger Fabric um, uh, 2.3 protocol. We have uh, adapted it for um, our local uh, cryptography. Um, in Russia, just like um, in China, there's a different standard for um, elliptic curve uh, cryptography. So we um, use Russian cryptography to sign uh, transactions so that um, our users who already have uh, digital, um, uh, digital certificates, uh, BGI certificates that are issued by a government body, they can, uh, they can uh, sign their smart contracts and sign their transactions. And you can trace every transaction, every signature to um, um, as a, a government certificate um, authority. We have also um, enhanced the consensus protocol of uh, Hyperledger Fabric by replacing um, the transaction ordering mechanism from Kafka, which is um, a CFT protocol with a variant of uh, a BFT protocol, a smart BFT. That allows us to offer a true blockchain consensus mechanism to our clients. Um, why is it important? Um, it's important when I when I describe it to uh, to the clients, I uh, give them uh, the minimum number of nodes. Let's say there's Sparebank and three other independent validators. Now, um, if it runs um, a true consensus uh, protocol like uh, uh, like Smart BFT, um, then uh, we can. Uh, server, our nodes, Sparebank's node, or uh, God forbid, we can throw in invalid transactions and the consensus um, algorithm will weed out those transactions and will not let them uh, propagate. So when you have 10 nodes, then uh, it's Sparebank and at least two other um, nodes that they can uh, uh, exhibit business and behavior, turn off their uh, service, and uh, the network will still continue operating. And that is the basis of... Uh, this new decentralized uh, economy that uh, uh, we hope will, uh, uh, will be our, um, our future. Again, in this future, a smart BFT uh, protocol will allow us to um, uh, 
it will allow our clients not to trust our name, but uh, trust the cryptography and consensus um, algorithm. Um, since we have uh, independent validators, um, they need to validate transactions. They uh, cannot see the details of the transactions because they, um, they hold confidential um, uh, business details. For that, we use um, the mechanism that we developed uh, and call confidential non-fungible tokens. Uh, what validators validate um, is an atomic exchange of one token uh, to another and a transfer of one token to another. Um, and the token does not reveal uh, its details. It has, of course, a unique ID. It is tied to a specific owner by its uh, public key, which is a one-time public key. And it has its whole body encrypted in an encrypted payload. And the content of uh, the token, which is a promise of the token, its uh, quantity, uh, what it represents, be it a uh, uh, financial instrument or a, a shipment of goods, it's all encoded so that the validators cannot uh, see its contents. Part of the platform, of course, is the wallet. Um, we're, uh, we're fortunate uh, by that uh, uh, businesses in, uh, in Russia have uh, already have digital keys. They have their private keys on uh, USB sticks that they sign their tax documents and other documents. Um, and we uh, reuse this, these tokens to sign smart contracts and to sign their user transactions. So uh, all users uh, need to do is to go to their familiar um, user interface, Sberbank Business Online, again, the application that they use every day, and they use uh, the same um, private key, the same digital wallet that they'll that lets us uh, just out of the box um, offer our clients, uh, offer the businesses um, ability to issue tokens and uh, run smart contracts and operate on the platform. And of course, major work went into um, integrating the platform for the bank's backend. Of course, this needs to be done if you need to, uh, if you run a, a real stable coin, which is tied to a user's account. Um, like I said, this uh, has been a major work because it needs to adhere to all the um, uh, security constraints and all the um, regulations. But it allows um, our users to seamlessly um, represent money that they have in their bank accounts by stable coins, use the stable coins to settle trades in tokens, um, and also send the stable coins to smart contracts. And once they're done trading, or once they've made money on uh, using smart contracts, they can withdraw um, their money into their fiat account. And again, this is done via a major um, integration work with uh, the backend. Now, um, how does it uh, look to the user? Um, those are the, um, the screenshots that uh, our users uh, uh, see when they issue tokens. So they can uh, create a type of a token. Um, a token can have, of course, its ticker, its name, its, um, uh, its logo. Um, and it can have uh, many attributes that are specific to this issue, right? If it's a uh, commercial paper, it's uh, uh, principle and uh, rate. If it's grain, it's the quality of grain and, um, and so on. And they can uh, keep issuing tokens um, every time they, um, uh, they need to. Now, we already use this functionality on the platform um, for uh, the issuance of uh, renewable energy certificates. They do, um, they do not fall under the law of digital financial instruments, um, assets. Um, and we started trading um, in this um, REC certificates or uh, renewable energy certificates uh, in December last year. So the platform is already open for business trading very soon. We hope to get uh, licensed by uh, the Bank of Russia so that our clients can issue uh, full-fledged financial instruments uh, in, um, in tokens on the platform. Um, once you've issued the token and it has been approved, um, of course, you can uh, transfer it or you can offer it for sale. And then it is available for investors to buy. In order to buy tokens or trade them, investors, of, of course, need to um, represent their money in stablecoin. And that's what they um, do in, the, um, in this user interface. Now, before, um, before we're licensed, before we open um, uh, for business in uh, digital financial assets, um, we, uh, we've opened a test net for developers. It, is, uh, uh, it consists of the minimum of four um, independent validators, four nodes. Um, four nodes, um, of course, they run on the, our variant of uh, Hyperledger Fabric. On Fabric, we have um, uh, 
uh, deployed, uh, we, we've created a public channel and we've deployed the CNFT smart contract. And of course it's open outside uh, via uh, API. Uh, developers can use a simple uh, JavaScript bundle to build web applications on top of that. Um, web applications use a limited subset of um, API calls like issue, transfer, and redeem. And of course you can build a full-fledged application, your own application with middleware, database, your own UI. Um, and for that, we have another um, Java bundle or a JVM bundle to use. Um, and of course, um, you can create your own custom chain code. Uh, this chain code you can upload to the network, uh, uh, to the platform. And um, like I mentioned already, this custom chain code can already use libraries that move tokens and most importantly that uh, uh, libraries that move stable coins so that you can uh, write a smart contract that uh, moves a stable coin and um, of course this is for now on testnet uh, not a real ruble but once you've tested you can migrate it to a real production system and create a, a new uh, fintech application um, this concludes my presentation. I hope that uh, it's been entertaining. We live in exciting times, and um, I think we're ready for this, uh, this um, exciting times. Thank you. We have a few minutes for, we have eight minutes for Q&A. Yes, thank you, Oleg. Um, and Great hearing you. Um, so we have two questions from Matthew White. Uh, first, Fabric now prefers the Raft service to Kafka. Uh, have you looked into Raft? Um, I believe we have. Uh, we made the choice uh, with Smart BFT. Mm -hmm. and well, well, the reason that uh, Smart BFT uh, is a business in full torrent, that that's what we rather offer to our clients, not uh, crash full torrent consensus. Right. Um, so uh, also Matthew was asking a while ago, um, the extension to Fabric, will this be contributed back? Yes, they will be. Now Smart BFT is already available on GitHub. It's a great work of, uh, um, former IBM developers that uh, um, we're using. Um, and yes, we will uh, we will open source integration of Smart BFT into Fabric together with um, another, um, um, I will not name the names, but um, another major contributor. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, and uh, there are two, three questions. Um, so another question was, um, Uh, as a fabric maintainer, primary, primarily of the chain code libraries, uh, would very much like to get thought, your thoughts on how you develop a smart contracts. How do we develop smart contracts? Um, yes. um, well, there are different smart contracts for different uh, applications and uh, fabric supports several languages for that and uh, uh, for some for some applications, you use uh, Golang. For some, uh, for example, if you need to use some, um, let's say, financial libraries that are not available in Golang, you would use uh, Java. So it's a, it's a different approach every time. Yeah. I hope I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. There is a question uh, about uh, how do you get access? How does one get access to the test net? Well. Um, that was the uh, that was my last slide. We have a simple email blockchain at uh, sparebank.ru. So simply write us an email, um, and uh, we'll get you set up. Great, that that's very easy. Um, uh, Kamlesh uh, Kamlesh is asking: uh, Most people prefer Ethereum and related projects for tokenization. Um, why did you choose Fabric? Do you have any specific reason? Well, um, there are several reasons. Um, uh, well, first off, uh, we need uh, we needed an enterprise blockchain platform that was um, uh, developed for the enterprise from the ground up. From the ground up, most importantly, um, 
a platform um, that would have um, um, a consensus mechanism, not for public uh, and anonymous uh, networks, but for um, validators who know each other and for limited subset of validators. Basically, we cannot use Ethereum because it uses proof of work. And if we have four or 10 validators, a small network, then we cannot really use Ethereum. But um, another another reason is that uh, Hyperledger Fabric is, uh, well, perhaps, the well, not perhaps, but it is the, um, the most popular enterprise uh, blockchain platform and we really uh, need to target as many developers as uh, as we can. So, so simply by popularity. I know Ethereum is also popular. Public, um, public protocols. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. Um, I'm checking if there are any more questions. Um, no, I, there are no, not many more, there, there aren't any questions. If anyone has questions, please feel free to ask. Um, um, Hyperledger, Besu and Quorum also are also an enterprise blockchain with build inbuilt tokenization. So that could also be a choice. I'm guessing the answer here is that you've been working on this way longer than Besu or Quorum were around in Hyperledger. Um, that is true. But um, uh, we're not. Um, I mean, what we our main goal is to offer uh, products to our clients, right? So we're not tied to a particular platform or a protocol. Um, so if um, um, and I think it's only logical to start offering different protocols. Let's say Hyperledger Besu or Quorum or uh, Polkadot um, uh, as stage two, three, and, and and so on. What's important is, is uh, in this network that we're building um, uh, independent validators and uh, integration with, uh, with the banks and integration of um, issues of tokens with their own backends. So at the end of the day, um, you may want to choose different uh, blockchain protocols for consensus and to validate transactions. Um, and it's perhaps even less important than um, the tie to the real world that you have. So integration of your uh, blockchain node to the bank system is more important than a particular protocol that uh, the nodes talk to each other with. Mm -hmm. So that's so the short the short answer that uh, uh, yes, it's very likely that we will use Quorum as our next step or other Ethereum uh, derivative. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we we have two more. I'm wondering, you know. Um, oh wait, there is a question uh, in the Q and A. As soon as I can. Thank you, Kamish. Um, how can uh, an application in your app store earn money? Well, that's a good question that we, um, to be honest, don't have uh, um, an answer for. We have, uh, well, rather we have several answers, right? You can uh, charge by um, by an Apple model, right? You can charge by transaction. Um, but also don't forget that uh, uh, the bank makes money of uh, transactions. So it, uh, another model is also very much possible where FinTech, uh, uh, FinTech developers develop their applications, they host them for free. Uh, we don't charge anything for the uh, sale of this application, but we continue making money of uh, transactions as a bank. Okay, that's, that's great. I, my question is probably much more loaded, so I'm not going to ask it. Uh, I'm going to ping you about it um, after the conference because um, it would take too long to answer. Well, Oleg, thank you so much for presenting. It was a pleasure uh, as always. And thank you for sharing uh, all of your insights. Uh, uh, if anyone wants to chat with you or comes up with questions, um, after the session finishes in, in 30 seconds, how can they uh, reach you? Uh, are you interested in having some offline chats or breakout sessions? Mm, uh, people well, I, just posted, I just posted our general email in the chat. It's uh, blockchain at sparebank.ru. And of course, we answer every, um, every email and you can continue this conversation via email and we can then move to another channel. Okay, sounds like a plan. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.